everyone. Gary Mazaroff, Gustavo Farrell. We're watching the men's doubles quarterfinal, the last streaming match of today. Uh, thank you, Tim Baghurst, who took a sabbatical leave. So Gustavo and I are taking over. Gustavo, your thoughts on this match? Well, thank you, Gary. It's good to be back with you here in Temuco, uh, Chile. We are ready to begin this match. The uh, referee, Mr. Jaime Martel, Mexico. I think we're going to see a very fast match with lots of walls hit this match. Yeah, we have the Camacho style, five, six walls a time. <laughs> Felipe Camacho representing Costa Rica. He and Teo Fumero, his partner, they hail from the capital city of San Jose. They're playing against Conrado Moscoso. He lives in one of the capitals of Bolivia, Sucre. And his partner, Coco Kelly from Santa Cruz de la Sierra. I see that Mr. Martel authorized that it was okay to use the BOL shirt, the BOL shirt, as a country uh, representative yes, shirt. Same with Argentina, ARG. So as Gustavo said, we have Jaime Martel from Chihuahua, Mexico, our head ref. Danny Maggi from Argentina. And Dean Shear from the USA will be our lines people. Here we go. Skip ball, side out. Teo Fumero represented, represented our Costa Rican Score allies. Zero, zero. Yeah. Felipe Camacho serving now. Second serve. Skip ball. Momentarily, Gustavo will comment on the nuances, the changes of the ball, because now we have the official ball of the IRF being the gearbox black. Served by Felipe. <laughs> Getting the view from the front camera, side out. Zero one. Orlando Coco Kelly. Very hard to see that, uh, not only on television, but as a referee to see that short line service. Coco Keller is one of the harder. And don't take anything away from his partner. Asked for a hinder and it's honored. So it's a dead ball hinder replay first serve. One of the things I like about this ball, Gary, is that it actually allows for a ceiling ball game, something uh, which we used to enjoy way back. In the I agree. Keller serving. One well, serving one, one game one. one. 31st version of the Pan American Racquetball Championships, which started in 1987 as the Torneo de las Americas. Second serve. That hit him. We'll replay Called that. Cambio. So he called an avoidable hinder. Hand out. 1 1. So Martel made the call based on him blocking a cross-court shot. Tough call. I believe there was a foot fault called on that one. Two Second serving, serve. one now. Moscoso serving. Three one. 
Olivia serving. Great serve, Gustavo. Why don't you explain what he did on that to our viewers? He has an ability to actually make that ball elevate on the drive and not make it to the back wall. It is coming at you well over 100 miles an hour. Very hard to even get your racket on if you don't start swinging as soon as the... Uh... Footfall. Falta de pie, so it's the front line, the service line. He has to step all the way over. And Martel is making that call initially, so he's setting a tone for the match. 4-1. Drive by Moscoso, 5-1. We haven't seen any of the Camacho five walls yet, but uh, look forward to them. We were t discussing it's actually possible. It's possible to actually hit six walls or just. I think the law of physics defies six. But if anybody could do it, Gustavo, it's Felipe. Six serving one. Uh, his heel is still on the line, so no footfall called. Side out. Side out. Teo Fumero, Costa Rica, 1-6. He can serve that time, so he jammed the ball into his partner. That's a dead ball. That's actually a fault serve, second serve. I would agree with that. IRF two years ago went to the two serve. Protocol for all divisions. Around. Great shot by Camacho. Point. Gustavo, as much as we like to poke fun at Felipe for wrapping the ball around so much, he can he has all the shots. So, skip. Camacho serving 2 6, game one. This is the last of our streaming matches. Folks, tune in 8 a.m. Central U.S. time. Tomorrow for the semifinal. Powerful. Selection. Very powerful in the front court. Side out. <laughs> Six serving two. Coco Keller serving. That would be a out serve. Second serve, first serve. This is the open category, folks. I've seen it happen twice this week where somebody actually skipped the serve in. About you, Gary, but I saw a footfall there. These guys are hitting the ball well in excess of 100 miles an hour. It's tough to run. catch everything. Now remember, we have two lines people, so players, teams may appeal. Side out, Costa Rica serving 2-6. Speaking with the folks from Costa Rica, they explained that they don't have a doubles uh, tournament to 
pick the team that's going to play in the Pan Ams. They actually take the first four players and then they decide who's going to be playing doubles and who's going to be playing singles. These folks have been playing together. That's correct, and they've done well. Serving two, Olivia serving. Moscoso yeah. winner. Great feet, great racket prep. Snaps a forehand winner. Seven. Regarding the ball, Gary, that green uh, ball we were using, pin ball, would come off the back wall very, very easily, setting up a kill to the front for any of the open players. That's what I like about this slower uh, gearbox ball. It actually hit through the ball. It's, it's a different mentality on, on hitting the ceiling ball. And we've had a number of ceiling ball uh, rallies, three, four, five in a row, which was rare, as you say, with the ball. Playing very well, both sides. Nine, serving two in game one. We have a timeout on the floor, folks. We will come back. Stay with us. Through 10 years of um, being around the racquetball community, Gearbox has done a great job. Number one thing that I noticed was just the family aspect of the company. I just thought it was really cool that they had that kind of lifestyle kind of look. I was seeing those black rackets. I still remember the first like all black racket and I thought they were kind of cool. I was like, oh my god, they don't have any color. Like it's so cool. It looks like a real weapon. And every year you I think you're gonna be like growing more and more and more till we add to something big. back folks, Gary Mazaroff, Gustavo Farrell, Pablo Farge. We are here in Temuco, way down south in Chile, way down south in Chile. I'm told it's the capital of the world. The world down south, we agree. We are here, we are here at Complejo Herman Becker in the Parque Municipal. Gustavo, I noticed that twist of the serve that time? Yep. Yeah. So Keller, right side, smashed one to Camacho, left side, for a surprise. Back to the C that time. There it is. Flat winner, Moscoso, 10-2. Seems like they, the Bolivians have the uh, Costa Ricans right where they want them. They haven't let them get into their game. Keeping the rally short, I think that's the key to the Bolivian success right yeah. now. Great first serves, weak returns, and put away. We'll see if this continues with the Gemelos. The coaching staff of Costa Rica decides to do uh, after game one. Half out. And out. 10-2. One thing I point out with uh, Moscoso's serve, he stretches. Very hard to keep it in the service area. Beautiful shot. Folks, years of practice on that shot. Roll out through his legs, left side. His dad is one of the two coaches, goes by the same name, El Mayor, the senior, and Gonzalo Amaya is the other Bolivian coach. Watch his front foot as he comes over that service. He called footfall, and 
therefore Martel saw the foot entirely over the service line, the front line. They're gonna appeal it because from our vantage point, it looked like his heel was on the line, which would be legal, L-E-G-A-O. Tough call, tough call. So, replaying it? Yes. Broken ball. Broken ball. So we assume that they had appealed the foot fault. First serve. Nice diving get. Held up, let's see what the call is. Safety hold up. Gave him a point. Good call. Number one issue is safety on the court, folks. So Jaime stop play and then he makes the call. When we resume play, it'll be 12-2. No, I believe they've been given a technical. Yeah. It'll be 12-1. Costa Rica was assessed a technical foul. Referee technical minus a point. If for some reason in this match they accrue two more, then they're disqualified. It's three per match in IRF rules. <laughs> So another technical would result in another minor. And after that, they would forfeit the match. Second serve. Olivia trying to close out game one. Moscoso from Sucre. One of the uh, rules of the game is to not appeal forfeits. Those are the only two things you cannot appeal in this. Otherwise, everything is appealed. Of animation, a lot of animation. 13 1. Beautiful shot. Offside pinch. No timeout on the floor. Gustavo will stay here, uh, assuming that uh, Costa Rica, uh, Bolivia closes this one out. Again, let's, let's try to identify any adjustments that. Uh, Team Costa Rica makes the coaching staff. That's I, impressive. I really think that they want to get into the rally with these guys, and they did a little bit. But uh, as long as the you know serve and return a serve and then re-kill, it's going to be tough to, to beat these guys from Bolivia. Uh, the Costa Ricans are used to playing long rallies, to getting a lot to a lot of balls, as we see there. So there, what the call was, was the avoidable hinder giving the point to Bolivia, and what uh, Teo earned was the technical because he argued it to the referee, Jaime Martel. Comportment is very important here, folks. Costa Rica needs to use their animation in a positive way, and they have it thus far, and obviously Bolivia has, so it's Game point. 14 1. Bolivia serving. Moscoso, second server. Now tell me you can see that short. Tough call. Camacho knows it's coming, but can I handle it? Baseball. I know the fastball is coming. Do I have the skills to handle it? 
skip ball. Game one. We'll be back for game two. There's, looks like there's an appeal on that final. So call stands. We will be back, folks. Gary and Gustavo and Pablo, stay tuned. Okay, we're back, Gary and Gustavo and Pablo. You saw Bolivia handle Team Costa Rica 15-2, uh, 15-1, they were assessed a technical. Your thoughts on that, Gustavo? Well, I think it was a good call. I, I don't see anything in the game there that I would have or called differently. I think Jaime did a very good job on Jaime Martin from Mexico. And uh, I was quite surprised to see the Bolivian team control that first game from the get-go. Yeah. So Camacho goes with a different twist. We talked about what changes. Let's use the backhand serve in MC. Let's see if it affects a positive change. And guess what? It, it did. did. Not. No, it did not. I stand corrected. 0-0, zero, zero, game two. Just been informed, Gustavo, uh, court three, the Cuban ladies beat Team Bolivia to earn a shot. The first time ever in an event of this stature that Cuba has won a medal. That's that, exciting. That is fantastic. And uh, let's give kudos to Team Chile who beat Team USA 2-0 in the quarterfinals. One zero here in Temuco, Chile. Bolivia against Costa Rica. Moscoso serving. Very tough to track that ball as a player and as a referee. Goes with the controlled Z on the second. Gets what he wants on the back wall. Aaron shot. Side out. Felipe Camacho serving. Zero one. He's asking for a hinder. Visual hinder. Much to the chagrin of Camacho. They better be careful. They got, already got assessed with one. They're entitled to one more thereafter they're done. One technical, that is. Correct. Just a great cross court, wide angle, handcuff tail. But technical aspects of a Z serve, you want the ball to land in the service court and angle into the deep sidewall. He did not do that. And to not come off that back. Nicely done by Coco Keller. Well, that's that's doubles, Gustavo. We've been talking about Moscoso, Mo Moscoso, Moscoso, Moscoso. And there's Keller, maybe hitting 20% of the shots. But when it comes his way, he's able to do something with it. Zero, Moscoso. Back up. Not jammed him again. Things are going to have to change radically to reverse this trend. I had the opportunity to play doubles once against Coco Keller. Quite honestly, I couldn't see the ball on the <laughs> serve. Yet now, 10 years later, you're able to. Congratulations. <laughs> Playing that again, 3-0, or I should say, handout. 
Moscoso serving. It looks short. I sure hope uh, Mr. Martel can see it from his angle. He's a quality ref. He sees it. Second serve. Great get by Teo, right side. Puts it away and comes in to serve. 0-3. We were talking about the ball, Gary, and I, I like what I'm seeing with this uh, slower ball where you can actually hit through it, hit ceiling balls, not worrying about it coming off the back wall. It, uh, it's going to allow for more players to play again, different ages. That is one of the things that we've noticed in this sport. The ball is so fast that the older players can no longer play because they cannot see or return the ball. Yeah, it becomes pretty much a function of uh, who can attack the serve because most players don't have the skills and the, the wherewithal to take that, we talked about, the first step to get in position to return them. That first step, critical first step. There's an appeal. Mano a mano. The call by Martel was good shot. There's an appeal that the ball skipped. Little delay here. I think they're going to. Wipe up the floor. With the surface on these courts, Gustavo, we haven't had as many towel timeouts this week, Very which is few. critical to efficient operations. Five courts here at the Herman Becker Complejo. This club was built in 2010, and this event was held here in 2012. And what I understand, there was another club with two courts here in the city. We both had the opportunity to be here back in 2012. And I can say that it continues to get better. Tremendous hospitality on all, on all fronts. Oh, great, great hands, hand. Camacho. So now, one point deficit trying to tie it in game two and force a tie break. If it does go tie breaks, folks, 11 points. Still entitled to two timeouts, one minute in length. Winner Keller, right side. 3 2, game two. Some of the things I like to point out as we're giving rules tests to many of the, or I should say, all of the referees here that uh, on the serve, one of the things that has to happen is the ball has to be bounced in the service area to commence the serve, otherwise that would be an out. Fault serve, second serve. The uh, ball itself, we've seen many players actually start outside of the service zone, but the ball itself has to, ball, have to start within the service zone. So we'll be back momentarily, folks. We're in game two in the last of the quarterfinal men's doubles here in Tumuco. W-R-T, legend number three. Tennis. Willy Willy. 
folks. Gary Mazaroff, Gustavo Farrell. We're here in day six of the 31st Pan American Racquetball Championships. You are viewing the last of the men's doubles quarterfinal today. Day one of streaming. We will be streaming beginning at 8 a.m. Central Time in the U.S., Central Daylight Time in the U.S., tomorrow and on Saturday. So please tune in. Gustavo, your thoughts on this match thus far? Well, I think they have uh, gathered themselves, and I refer to the Costa Rican team after that uh, first game loss, actually drudging 15-1. The uh, second game they're holding in, I think that's key for them to be able to go back and forth all the way up to the double digits. They may have a chance there. They're playing better. They like to play a lot of racquetball. I know these guys from Costa Rica, they do well with games go long. And you mentioned to extend the rallies. So critical is the return of serve. Also when they get into serve, if they can create mistakes whereby they can end the rally. Wide angle pass, textbook, Keller right side. Once again, our head ref, Jaime Martel from Chihuahua, Mexico. Dean Shear is lines person from Colorado in the US. And Danny Maggi from Buenos Aires in Argentina is the other lines person. Tried to return that between his legs. No luck there, second server, first serve. Moscoso serving for Bolivia. I continue to see a foot fault there. Well, if Jaime starts to isolate on that, he's going to lose everything else. Power Z that time. Wrap around. Slams the ball at the feet of Camacho to score a point. Jams him. It's an excellent Five, shot. 5 2 in game two. You mentioned that uh, court surface not being sealed or with polyurethane. Yes, it's good for uh, keeping the game going. No wet balls, very nice, but it certainly does take a toll on the athlete's knees and bodies when they hit the ground. That's accurate. Five two. Still second server, Conrado Moscoso. Point scored on that. They gave him a point on that. That's correct. They, they earned a point. Six two. What a serve. That's, that's impressive. That's impressive. Camacho, all he could do is get the racket on the ball to return it legally, and then Roscoso took the ball on the fly and rolled it right corner. I do notice that they are not being taken out of the front court. The Bolivian team has total control of the front court. Fault serve. Second serve. Notice Keller situated legally in the doubles box. Feet, both of them on the ground, in the side of the doubles box. Another point. Okay, so what happened was I believe Moscoso indicated to Martel, the official, that the ball on its way to the front wall hit his racket, so it's a dead ball hinder replay. Score is 8-2. 
Mateo. Side out. Little grito there, huh? Right. Safety. Hold up, side out. Two eight, game two, Camacho. Hand out. You can certainly see the difference in speed when Camacho serves as to when uh, Moscoso serves. C serve. Side out. I mean, that ball came deep, and Keller had the wherewithal to still pass him right side. Looks like the Costa Rican team's getting a little bit frustrated. Get focused back on the game here. Oh, my. Beautiful. In the air, backhand, pinch winner. 9-2. Keller. Ball was floored on the return, 10-2, and we have a timeout on the floor. So we're gonna stay with you folks. Gustavo, let's talk about a few of the uh, rules, differences between IRF and U.S. racquetball. Let's start with time. Number one, timeouts. So international play, how many timeouts per game? We have two timeouts per game now between the first, second, and the tiebreaker if necessary. Uh, and the time between games is now standard. Standard at two minutes as well. It's helped uh, speed the game up a bit. And the length of the timeout in international play in a perfect world is? One minute in a perfect world. And we do try to hold them to that as officials. Otherwise, it can get extended like you say. What we encourage the officials to do, folks, is uh, when there's 20 seconds left, they inform the players that there's 20 seconds and ask them to enter the court. Otherwise, if they wait till the minute is up, by the time the player or team serves, it's a minute and a half. So we try to abide by that minute. I have to say most of the players have been very cooperative with respect to that. I haven't seen any delay of game technicals assessed for intentional we have delays. Thir 13 international officials in this event. And the reception from all the delegations has been very, very positive, very strong. Continuity developed over the years. Some of these officials have uh, attended together for probably the last six years. There's that 75 to 80% called the timeout and uh, scientifically it says, hey, you call the timeout as a receiver, you're going to come in and win that next rally. And they did. They certainly did. Nice shot by Felipe Camacho. Fault serve second. Two years ago, that would have been an out because they were playing one serve. Side out. Felipe Camacho. Many, many years on the Costa Rican national team as a junior, now as an adult. He's living in the States now in Florida, in Delray Beach. That was flat. You can't hit it any lower than that.
Keller. <laughs> wow. Patented. Patented. What can you say? Between the leg. Look at this, folks. Look at this. Nice get by Dale. Between the leg. Pinch. Frustration shown by Dale Fumero. Still 10-2. Side out. Conrado Moscoso serving. Set up up front. Smash winner, right side. And when I say smash, I'm using a capital S off of Mc Moscoso's racket. 11-2 now. Avoidable hinder point. Let's see if he gets it. He didn't give it to him. That's an appealable call. They're appealing. Call stands. Both lines people, uh, persons upheld the call. So a loss of an available appeal by Team Bolivia. They're now down to two in this game. Three appeals per game. And it's a lost appeals. Usable appeals, correct. And uh, international play, if you've used all your available op opportunities, uh, there's no game-ending opportunity like in the U.S. That is correct. Side out. Costa Rican team comes up to serve. Camacho using the backhand delivery. Second serve. Okay. So, Vuelve, replay. Wow. Teo Fumero, my broadcast partner, right back at him. calls Fumero, Senor Smoke. Very appropriately. Keller. Keller again. Second time's a charm. Gustavo, if somebody asks who was playing for Bolivia, chances are they'd say Moscoso because Keller's been very unobtrusive in this match, yet when he's had the opportunity, which has been rare, he's been able to end the rally. He certainly has. Most of the Game-winning, exciting points have come from Moscoso, but uh, Coco just seems to get the job done on the right side when the ball comes to him. Hand out, half out. 11-2, Moscoso, Moscoso serving. here. Footfault, Jaime Martel, head ref. Footfault, that would be a second serve. Different twist on that one. Set up. Uh, looks like the ball skipped in. Called it good. Called it good. Okay, go through the process. 
The call was legal shot. There was an appeal. Call was over. Uh, overruled. So no appeal used. Costa Rica still has three. Now they're serving 2-11 in game two. Goes with the jam in the middle with the backhand. First mistake in a long while by Moscoso, so point. Felipe Camacho. Tail. Oh my, beautiful. See where the ball, the ball hit the side wall at about uh, 30 feet. And then took its first bounce on the floor right at his feet. Very difficult to return a jam like that right at your feet. I might add with a lot of pace on the ball. Skip. Trying to creep back, 4-11. Four, four Keller, right side. Animation, more positive this game from Team Costa Rica. Can't afford any more referee technicals. Skip ball. Good call. Sidewall, floor. Front wall. Time out on the floor. We will return to Temuco momentarily. Stay tuned, folks. Through 10 years of um, being around the racquetball community, Gearbox has done a great job. Number one thing that I noticed was just the family aspect of the company. I just thought it was really cool that they had that kind of lifestyle kind of look. I was seeing those black rackets. I still remember the first like all black racket and I thought they were kind of cool. I was like, oh my god, they don't have any color. Like it's so cool. It looks like a real weapon. And every year, you I think you're gonna be like growing more and more. I thought and she more was a line. Till we had to something big. back. Tabuco, Chile, capital of the world. Complejo, Herman Becker, Parque Municipal. It's a multi-sport discipline park here. 12-minute walk from our hotel. Just great hospitality, Gustavo, this week on, on, on all accounts. Yes, for sure. I think it's one of the uh, nicest uh, all-around venues that we've been to at these events, uh, including the, the hotel, the food, the staff, uh, here at the club. Unbelievable, the, the folks on the maintenance side, the cleaning, have been wonderful. Allowing Very some of the administration to come in and, and use the courts before and after hours. Transportation. Incredible. We've been uh, walking quite avidly, uh, quite often, which is, it's a wonderful walk. Coffee houses, great restaurants, a lot of things to do in this town. We, uh, we predicted that the population now is about between 400 and 500,000. There was 260,000 in the early 2000s. But uh, talking to a lot of locals, there's been a lot of growth. Yeah. 
Bolivia trying to close out two more points for the win to earn an opportunity in the semifinals tomorrow. Costa Rica has really never been in this match. No, no, they have not. No, they didn't get into their game. The round the world shots didn't have an opportunity. Bolivia did not give them a chance. Another, another point. I agree. They know the rules, but you have no other choice. You appeal. Yeah, that was a wasted appeal. Well, as uh, we endearingly ask our buddy Tom Travers, Tom, you going to use your timeouts today or tomorrow? So he's saving them, I believe. <laughs> Might as well use it if you have it down match point. There you go, You're using one of their available smart resources. Very smart. FYI, I believe Danny disagreed with the call. Just now? Yeah. Dean agreed, but I think Danny disagreed. <laughs> Interesting that one of the uh, lines people would have disagreed with that call, which appeared to be a very apparent avoidable. Maybe it wasn't so apparent. Yeah, we're talking about the dynamics of uh, lining and, and coaching mentality. Right. So you, you have an available appeal, use it. You have an available timeout, use it. That may have been a case where he should have said, I didn't see it instead of reversing it because he really didn't have the angle to make that call. Which but nonetheless, the Which would have stood. created a one and one, meaning it would have been a replay. We're waiting for Deo Fumero to come back on the court here. So we have 12 teams in this event, Pan American Racquetball Championships. We mentioned earlier, first event was in 1987. I believe it was in uh, Caracas. And if one does the math, this should be the 32nd, but we missed one year in Bolivia because of uh, events unforeseen. So here we are in the 31st edition. Next year will be the 32nd edition in Chihuahua City, capital of Chihuahua province in Mexico. I believe it's the Campestre, is that correct? Campestre. Uh, our producer, Pablo, asked me where my first one was. It was 1988 in Santa Cruz de la Sierra Bolivia. San Jose, Costa Rica. You know, I'm trying to remember when mine was. But I think it was in 2009 or 10. I didn't start coming along until uh, about that time period. I think I did the Worlds before that. I played in the World Championships in 96. That's correct. In Long serve, folks. Fault, second serve. In fact, uh, I think I had an opportunity to play with our, my producer here. And I, and I played against, in 88, I played uh, in the uh, friendship division for the U.S. team. And I played against our uh, leader, Rivaldo Maggi, who was playing for Uruguay at the time. No ceiling balls yet on this one. <laughs> Repeat then. Visual hinder. Great rally. So folks, the protocol is you think you're being hindered. 
You put your arm up, you continue play if nothing is called, which Camacho did. So this will be match point number two. Keller, oh, staved it off. Side out. Sportspersonship from Teo. And here's Camacho. Stranger things have happened, folks. 514. Costa Rica serving for server. Get by Coco. Teo. <laughs> Keller keeps it going. Teo. We couldn't see that what happened there. Looks like a repeat. So they're they're playing it over. Yes, sir. Looked like Folks, Camacho hit uh, Conrado on that play replay. We're sequestered over here in the broadcast booth, so we don't always get the, the direct feed. Half out. Teo is serving now for Costa Rica, down 5-14. Second game. Left up pinch, left up pinch. Down. Side out now. Match point number three. Orlando Coco Keller lives in Santa Cruz down in the Hungla. And way up in the mountains is his partner in Sucre, Conrado Moscoso. Second serve. Two ways to indicate not ready. Rack it up and or turn around. Back to your opponents. So they staved off match point number three. Here's match point number four. Last year we had nine match points in one of the matches in this div division. I believe it was Rhonda. And she ended up winning the tournament, beating Paola in the final. I skipped in. We could see that camera shot perfect to watch Animation, that skip. Teo, animation. So here we are at 514. Four match points saved. Felipe Camacho. Got his engineering degree from Colorado State University in Pueblo. Different twist on that. Nicely Great. done. Great touch. He Great likes touch. that corner. Yes, he does, and the corner likes him as well. Here we go. Teo. In the middle. There it was again. He owns that corner. It's like baseball, Gustavo. You get runners in scoring position, you gotta cash them in. Costa Rica had three chances to end that rally.
Different twist on that. He went cross court. More animation from Teo. Fifth match point. Here we are. Yes. Hand out. Conrado Moscoso serving. See if he goes for the deep crack serve. Okay, there's a <laughs> That's an appealable call. It certainly is. Let's see what happens. Bolivia can appeal as well, saying that they weren't ready. No more appeals. They cannot appeal a game ending rally here, like in the U.S. rules. They're appealing to their opponent, however. Game over.